Tonight we're going to talk about the divine nature that we have in God. If you would turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse, uh, well, we'll just start in verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is kind of a greeting. Amen. According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertaineth or pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great, everybody say great, great. and precious promises, say it, and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. You have been given an opportunity to partake of the divine nature. Amen. Now, this morning, if you weren't here or you missed the service or you didn't join us online, um, you should go back. Amen. It's right out there on, online. Uh, but James spoke this morning about the, uh, this, this precious promises that we have in Christ. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And this divine nature is one of those precious promises that we have. But a lot of times believers don't understand, well, what does that mean, the divine nature? How is that applicable to me in my life, the divine nature. See, they become born again or they hear about Christ and they believe it, right? They want to receive all that he has for them, but they don't take the patience to learn and understand what it means to be fully in Christ and understand the divine nature that we have as being new in Christ. Amen. So we're going to just take a look at this tonight. And I believe that um, the Lord will, will challenge you wherever you are in your walk in Christ. Amen. Some of you might be new to Christ. Some of you may be uh, old hat at, you know, the word and you've read it many, many times and you're serving and you're faithful. Uh, but it's, it's, it's never wrong to check your foundation. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So verse four, it says that we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So see, we this is what the divine nature has um, provided for us an escape. Yes. Hallelujah. We've escaped the corruption that's in the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that means we don't have to partake or participate in the corruption that's in the world. We have an escape through the divine nature. Well, what does all of that mean? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, let's look at it a little bit deeper. Amen. Hallelujah. This is, the, this is the eternal bond that James was talking about this morning. We have... Uh, new and precious promises uh, through Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, it's that ye might be. I believe that's verse four there. It says that ye might be. Now, I always read that and thought, well, that means, well, maybe you will. Maybe you won't. That's, that's actually not what this word ye might be. It's a phrase. It doesn't actually mean that. I always thought that, you know, in English, that's what might means. Maybe. <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Well, it, it, the, the uh, New Testament wasn't written in English. Hallelujah. So this phrase ye might be, it means to become, to arise, 
or to come upon, even to come upon the stage, to appear in public. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Well, I don't want to be in public. Well, you are in public. You got here today, tonight, right? <laughs> if you're in the room, you, you, you got out in the public and drove down the street. Amen? amen? Providing, hopefully, some witness, some light, some testimony of <laughs> his divine nature in your driving. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. See, uh, it says that ye might... Go ahead and look at verse 4. We'll look at the top of verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. So as we read about the, uh, the understanding of what ye might be, it means to become. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready to become? Hallelujah. See, like it or not, you're on the public stage. You are in public. Hallelujah. And you have a divine nature if you've accepted Christ. But what is it that the public is seeing? Hallelujah. What is it that is on stage for the world to see in you? Amen. Just a little bit of subtle challenge for us tonight. Amen. Because we have escaped the corruption that's in the world through lusts. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what does the word divine mean? It means godlike. Okay. What does the word nature mean? We're talking about divine nature tonight. What does nature mean? Well, it means growth. It has roots in the word genus where we get genetics uh, it means to give birth to. Uh, it means sort. So in other words, you know, this kind and that kind or this sort after the other. So they're the like kind. So you have uh, those that are in Christ are in Christ. Those that are in the world are in the world. So we've been born again. Amen. And we're now... In the family of Christ, we have a new kind, a new sort. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we could read this, uh, that we might be partakers of the divine nature. You could, you could take it literally to mean that we are rooted in God-like nature, having escaped the other nature. <laughs> rooted in God-like nature, having escaped the nature of the world, the other nature that's there. Amen? The nature we were born into. Everybody was born into it. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I love one thing that James mentioned this morning. He said that, you know, God restrains his behavior based on his covenant promises. Praise the Lord. And thankfully he does. <laughs> Amen. Now, why can't we restrain our behavior? Because of the God-like nature, the divine nature that we have on the inside of us. He actually enables us to restrain ourselves. <laughs> he empowers us to forgive, to walk in love, to, to do all that we do for him. He can empower us to do that. All right, we're going we're gonna to keep digging tonight. Are you all ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. So anything that doesn't line up with the word of God is susceptible to the nature of corruption. Amen. So we have, we have the Bible as our, our instruction of what is the divine nature. What is it that we are to be restrained to? Amen. Now, that doesn't mean... Uh, you, you know, so in Christ, we are free, right? We, there's liberty. So uh, when I say constrain or restrain, we're not talking about being bound. We're, we're set free. Amen. But we but we can control ourselves. Right. <laughs> Amen. In order to fulfill a purpose. So he's given us a purpose. 
Uh, we'll look at it later, but Jesus in his great commission, uh, he gave us a purpose to tell other people about the uh, divine nature that's available to them. Amen. Amen. So we can allow that to guide us, if you will. Amen. So we have, you know, you drove here tonight or rode here tonight on a road and there's some constraints on that road. Does that mean you weren't free? No, you, you got here with some constraints. You're free. You could have gone this way or that way or the long way or the short way. You could have broken all the restraints, right? Gone a little too fast or gone a little too slow. Been there, seen, seen that happen too. Hallelujah. But you got here. Amen. And we're free in Christ. We're free. We have some guidelines or some some uh, uh, instruction, if you will, right here for us that, you know, we need to learn what it says. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we've been bought with a price. Did you know that? Say, I've been bought with a price. Hmm. Well, that sounds like a, a slave. What well, Jesus actually said, I no longer call you servant. I, I call you friend. Yeah. Amen. See, so we're, we're not serving the Lord out of duty. That's religion. We're serving him because we want to. He's our friend. Amen. So what I'm looking for tonight, the Lord is looking for a shift of your mind, a, a deposit in your spirit of his divine nature. And that's what that's what Jesus said that. Amen. I no longer call you servant. I call you friend. He is your friend. You might not have looked at him as a friend. You might have looked at him as I'm here to serve. What can I do? I'm serving as a duty. He's saying, Jesus said, serve me out of your heart because you love me, because you want to be with me. Hallelujah. You know, there are some people that I'm speaking now naturally you want to be with. <laughs> you might not want to be with other people, but in the spirit and by the spirit, it doesn't matter. You can be with the people you might not naturally want to be with because of his divine nature on the inside of you, it doesn't merely matter. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So a lot of times people get caught up in the natural kind of side effects of things. And they don't allow the divine nature to kind of purge them or help them along in their spiritual walk with the Lord. Because they, they uh, keep the, the natural thing as a wall, really, between them and their total freedom and their total uh, commitment to the Lord. Amen. And, and we, have to, we have to learn how to just allow his divine nature to come on us. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep going. So how about we serve God because we want to, amen? Not because we have to, but because we want to. How about we come to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night? Because we want to. We have a desire to know him, to know more about him, to be able to understand so we can explain and tell and teach and preach and serve other people because we want to. Amen. We want to. How many of you want to serve the Lord? You want to love him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, this is kind of this is really a relationship, right, that we have with the Lord. And it's funny when you're, you know, you're out in the world and you, you're around other people, you see how they're relationships work. Some of them are, you know, husband and wife and boy, they really, you know, they serve each other out of love and respect like they should. But then you see others, you know, and there's, uh, you know, it's duty, <laughs> right? Well, they, they all have their place <laughs> in the home, right? 
You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I need I go any further, right? All right. So, but that's not how it is in the kingdom, right? We should, in our relationship with God, it's not out of, out of this, uh, uh, you know, expectation of, of uh, slavery, right? We've been bought with a price. We've been set free from religion, We've been set free to be a friend of Jesus. Amen. And to walk with him and talk with him. And boy, I'm telling you, that is freedom. That when you receive it and understand it and walk in it, you're free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because a friend is, it loves at all times. A friend is there through thick and thin. Hallelujah. Jesus is there with us. At all times. Amen? Amen. So we partake in this divine nature through our relationship with God, through our prayer. So we, we, we pray because we have a relationship with him, because we want to pray. We want to see, you know, the world uh, have a revival. So we pray for it, right? We intercede for it. We want to see our family saved. We want to see our neighbors saved. So we pray for them. But we don't just walk by them and say, there, yeah, yeah, well, there they go. Right? We don't, we don't allow the corruption of the world not to, to just go by without addressing it in the spirit. Because, and it's not out of this uh, fear or not out of, Anger, it's because of the love that we have. You know, when we see people in the world, we need to have compassion on the inside of us. That's the divine nature. That's what what moved Jesus. When it says Jesus was moved with compassion, that's the divine nature. Empowering him to do supernatural things. And that's what's on the inside of us when we commune and fellowship with God. And we can... We can, uh, we can change the world around us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the commission that Jesus gave us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we, uh, we, that's just prayer. How about uh, our fellowship? Fellowship with each other. Iron sharpens iron. That's not, I'm getting into your business and you're getting into my business. We're, we're fellowshipping. We're just talking about the good things of the Lord. We're reminding each other of, of well, you know, that this is what the Bible says. Isn't it exciting? Did you see this? Did you hear that? Amen. That, that is fellowship in the Lord. Amen. And how about our service to the Lord? Just like I said, it's because you want to. You want to tell others what you know about the Lord. You want to share your testimony, how the Lord delivered you from from, you know, addiction or delivered you from strife, delivered you from unforgiveness, delivered you and healed you, right? That, that's the testimony of his divine nature working in you that has worked the old corrupt world out of you. Amen. So we have, a, we have something to share with other people. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's our service. How about our worship? Well, you know, some people don't come to church in time for worship. Hallelujah. But he, you know, uh, uh, wants us to worship him not because we have to, but because we want to. Amen. You should get lost in your worship. You should get lost in your worship. You shouldn't just be there. Well, I've heard this song before. Here we go again. Wow. Wow. Man, that divine nature should rise up on the inside of you with every word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you say, well, that's not me. But it, 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 and don't feel bad because it, it, it's a, it's a process. It's a time. It takes time. And so this is no condemnation. If you're like, man, I don't, I'm not with you. (laughs) I, I hear you. I see it on other people, but I am not there. It's okay. It's all right. It, it takes time. Hallelujah. You might not be filled with the spirit, but you can be. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You, you, uh, you, you might have a whole lot of the world hanging on you or around you. Hey, you're here. You're listening. You're walking with Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. And, and he's here to reveal to you. We're going to look at it even deeper in a minute. Reveal to you this, this divine nature so that you can understand. You can receive it and walk in it. All right, let's look at it a little, little bit. Here we go. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. The main thing to understand is not by your own strengths. It's not by your own ability that we walk in this. So you don't force it. You don't make it. That's your own strengths. That's religion, right? That's a list of things that you have to do in order to uh, have approval. Okay, that's that's religion. We 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 I'm we. This is not about religion. This is New Testament. Worship we're talking about. Amen. All right. So we talked about the divine nature, which is when God becomes the source. Amen. And then the human nature is when we are the source. So it's easy for some people, you know, to uh, or organize their lives around themselves being the source because it's ex- they know what to expect. And that's natural to want to have an understanding of what's next. What, what do I expect, right? <clears throat> what the word is showing us is that we have to rely on him as being our source. And so this is the part of us growing up in Christ into the fullness of who Christ is. Amen. So that's the divine nature when God becomes the source. So uh, let's use our fathers as as an example. We're going to look at fathers for just a moment. So in human nature, you have a natural father. Now, some here tonight, some that are joining us online, you might not have had a good natural father. You might not have even known who your natural father was. Some's had good experiences. Some have had you know, no experience or terrible experiences. That's the natural side of fathership. All right. But you came from a father. All of you did. Okay. Whether you liked it or not, there was a father involved. Amen. There was only one that didn't have a father involved. Amen. Now, in this divine nature, we have a heavenly father. Amen. So, In the natural, your father was the source of you. And hopefully, if you had a good father, he provided for you. Now, I realize that wasn't everybody's experience. Now, our heavenly father is our source. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we might have to, depending on your understanding or knowledge of fatherhood, you, you might need to retrain or reshape in your thinking what, uh, how your behavior should be towards your heavenly father. Amen. So don't base your relationship with him on natural things. Hallelujah. He doesn't base his relationship on you based on natural things. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. You know, the, every day is a good day. Every because it's a day he has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Amen. So uh, see what I mean by uh, supernatural. <laughs> Amen. So in the natural, it, it, things might not look good. It might be raining five days straight. <laughs> and you have to deal with it for whatever reason. Right. Your air condition broke. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's 90 degrees outside. You know, tomorrow. <clears throat> it's humid. All right. But it's a good day. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, ba- we need to base our relationship with him and his divine nature uh, on things that are true, which we know out of this. Amen. And so we have to look at what our heavenly father is. He's the originator. 
originator. He's the original source of. And so I'm going to go through a quick list here. James 1.17 says, Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. So he's the source of light. Amen. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, he's so bright. <laughs> His light, the source of light is so bright, there's no shadow. Hallelujah. And that's who is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. That's our divine nature. Here's another. Second Corinthians 1, 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. See, he is the source of mercies. You don't have enough mercy. <laughs> but through Christ, you can have mercy on all people. And God, it goes on to say, and the God of all comfort. See, that's in our divine nature. That's who we are in Christ. Ephesians 1.17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. So how do we walk in glory? He's the source of glory. <laughs> that means he's got it. And if I'm in him and he's in me, then I've got glory. He's the Father and source of glory and mercy and light. Hallelujah. To where there's no darkness. Hallelujah. And that's what's on the inside of us, his divine nature. Amen. Everybody turn with me to John 14 and verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah. In my father's house, there are many mansions. The Greek word mansions is the word Monet. Did you know God loves art? <laughs> I just made that up. That's pretty good, isn't it? No, no, it is the Greek word Monet. In my father's house, there's many that's pretty fun, isn't it? All right. Y'all are still with me tonight. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, in verse two, it says, in my father's house. So we, we learned that the word father means the source of. So when we're, ref this is Jesus talking. He's talking to uh, uh, the disciples about believing. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Hallelujah. Now, this word mansions, it means a, a staying, abiding, dwelling, abode. It's a metaphor for God and the Holy Spirit indwelling in believers. So in my father's house, the source of the indwelling, the source of the abiding, the source of your the place to live. When you go home tonight, you're going to a house somewhere that you're going to abide. Amen. In, that's in the natural. But in our divine nature, we have a place in God where we can abide. We can go. He is our source. He sources that for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, by believing in me, my father, the source of a divine wholeness. Uh, I forgot to I mentioned that. It also means to make whole. The word mansions. It means to make whole. Hallelujah. He's the father of those many mansions. He is the source of wholeness. He can be the source of wholeness. Because in the natural, not every, you know, we're not all whole around here in the natural. You know, there's something broken or there's something is name right or, you know, things here and there. And that not people aren't whole. They're not born that way. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Hallelujah. But in Christ, he is the God is the source of many places of wholeness for us. Amen. Yeah. This is the divine nature we're talking about. This is what we have access to. So, you know, if you don't like the course your life is on, check the source. Hallelujah. 
the divine nature. He is our father, the source. Amen for us. Hallelujah. So check to see if you're walking according to the divine nature. Change your, when you change your source, you can change your course. Hallelujah. All right, turn with me to Luke 24. Uh, probably the last scripture we'll look at tonight. Luke 24. Uh, probably for sake of time, we'll just kind of paraphrase some of this and look at three or four sh- verses. Luke 24, we have the resurrection of Jesus. And so after he was resurrected, there were some that went to the tomb and they saw that he wasn't there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Angels came to explain, hey, don't you remember? Verse uh, 7, it says, the Son of Man must be uh, delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Verse 8, and they remembered his words. And so they went in verse 11 and told some more people. And verse 11, it says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. So those that saw that he wasn't there, went and told the others what happened and they didn't believe it. Hallelujah. So in their own natural state of mind, their own natural thinking, they didn't receive or understand or have the knowledge that this is true. Okay. Uh, So we could go on to read, but let's look at verse 16. It's, um, Verse 16, it says, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Uh, Sorry, I should have started in verse 15. Jesus himself is now walking with them. Verse 15, you can back it up there. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near. And went with them, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Now, uh, this, this, uh, the word eyes there is just a metaphor for the eyes of the mind or the faculty of knowing. Holden means held in check. So their natural senses was, were, was holding them in check. They, they, they didn't see Jesus for who he was because, they, you know, they knew that he had, he had died on the cross. This wasn't him. This was somebody else. Yeah. It's not possible, right? Their eyes were holding. They were, they were not able to receive that that was him or that it was true. Hallelujah. And Jesus himself was right there with them. Yeah. And he's talking to them. He's asking them questions. Drop down to verse 31. Mm. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Hallelujah. Their eyes were opened and they knew him. How did this happen? It was supernatural. Because, see, in the natural, we reason. I find it interesting that Jesus drew near when they were reasoning. It's not wrong to reason. There's lots of scripture about reasoning. Be reasonable. (laughs) Count the cost. Amen. That's reason. Invite Jesus in. Amen. Allow the divine nature to speak to you in your process. Amen. Allow your eyes to be open to hear and receive what he has for you. Amen. It's supernatural. 
So this divine nature, it's not a natural thing. It's, it's a process that you can learn to walk in. You can learn to, um, to identify his voice. You can learn to identify the spirit leading you and prompting you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you'll have the answer right with you, but you won't discern it unless you develop your relationship with God and the spirit. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus was right there with him. They did not discern him. Eventually they did. Amen. And their eyes were open and they were like, hey, divine. Amen. So I believe tonight that the, the eyes are being opened to his divine nature in all of us. Amen. And there are things in our lives that <clears throat> we have had uh, uh, our, our eyes closed to. But he, he wants to bring in his, his source to pay off that house. He wants to bring in his source to provide forgiveness for that person that you've been holding unforgiveness for. He wants to bring in his source of love to overwhelm you with compassion in order to reach that neighbor of yours. Hallelujah. He wants to impart his divine nature to all of us. Amen. We have to allow our eyes to be open. This is what the Great Commission was all about. Right after their eyes were open, he said to them, go and and tell other people. And they did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This transformation can be instant, uh, but it, it could take some you know, more depth in your understanding and, and building on a, a knowledge of what the word says about your particular situation. Amen. But, uh, but, you, but the best thing to do <laughs> is to allow him to have access to you. Amen. Allow him to have access to your heart. Be his friend because he is your friend. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you begin to walk with him as a friend, he's going to talk to you as a friend and you'll know his voice. Hallelujah. He's the shepherd and 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 the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. Amen. So you say, oh, I, I don't know his voice. I don't I can't hear him. You, you will. You will. You seek him first. Seek first the kingdom and. And, and his righteousness. And, and you'll know him. You'll know him. You'll know him. Hallelujah. Sometimes, I, and this is one way that I've developed a knowing, a knowing is when I've heard something and I didn't do it. And then the consequence came. And I'm like, yeah, that was you. I know now. I know. That was you. Mm -hmm. Yep. I shouldn't have done that. I knew it too. I had a little, uh, you ever had that? Like right before you did, you know, I was once I was uh, supposed to get a ladder to climb. You know, generally you climb on a ladder to reach something you can't reach instead of climbing the shelf, you know. <laughs> I had a little, a little witness on the inside say, go get the ladder. I didn't get the ladder. Amen. And there was consequences. When I fell back and everything. Yeah. 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 Amen. So, you know, and that's part of what I'm talking about, you know, listening. So I learn now when I get that little witness. Amen. Sometimes it's a voice. You know, sometimes it's a picture. Sometimes it's a sign. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a scripture. However it comes, I, I know that it's the divine nature leading me. God's got, got a reason for it, right? Um, uh, yesterday, I was working on my house and uh, putting in a new railing because the other one rotted. Anyway, uh, I, about three months ago, I bought this tool. I said, I, this is the coolest thing. I'll, I'll never use it. It is so cool. I can't even believe they make this thing. It's this, this contraption you put on a drill that you can use facing you. It's like, and it works. 
And I just bought it. I said, I don't know. Hopefully, I'll never need that thing. But I couldn't believe they made such a thing, and it worked. I put it on the shelf. So I put in this railing up yesterday, and guess what I needed? <laughs> I get to the, 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 the last two screws. I'm like, I can't do this. The angle, I can't get the drill there. And as I'm going to go do what I needed to do, I saw the picture of that tool sitting right on the shelf. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, the Lord knows. The Lord knew before I even knew that right then I needed that to finish the job. Amen. And oh, my goodness, I got the knife and cut that thing open and put that thing on the drill and zing, zing, got in there. It was done just like that. What in the world? Who would have thought? Praise the Lord. He knows that's his divine nature prompting me to get that. They even know about it. I never knew such a thing existed. <clears throat> I, had to go, I even went and asked somebody, did you ever see this thing? Is this real? I can't even believe it. It took the, takes the drill thing and points it to, in your direction to get in a small hole. Hey, Whew. now I know why. Amen. Divine nature. Let's all stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, God wants to just speak to us even at the hardware store. <laughs> hey, but you, you, have to, you have to want that. Amen. You know, uh, I, I have to caution myself because I, I, I have so much of the love of God on me. I, just, I want to help anybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, if you need something, I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> But I got to be able to do it in the time that I got to be, be able to do it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But some people don't want to help anybody. They, amen. They, they, they just see that you need something and they keep on walking. <laughs> amen. Think about that good Samaritan. I mean, they just kept on going. Amen. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Let me get on out of here. <laughs> Hallelujah. You drop something? Oh, she dropped that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the divine nature is, go help that person. Yes. Amen. Somebody needs help, help them. Yes. You got two, two shirts, give them one of yours. Yes. They don't have a shirt, help them. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift our hands <clears throat> to the Lord. And, and I believe there's a deposit tonight yes. for um, all of us. Hallelujah. We'll never be the same again. Father, I just thank you for this time with you tonight. Lord, I thank you for your word, your revelation tonight that you've given to us. Lord, about your divine nature, Lord, that it is working in us. Lord, to perfect, Lord, your will and your desires in us. Lord, that we'll yield to this divine nature that you have provided for us. In Jesus' name, Lord, we'll fulfill all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.